discontinuous discontinuous so what is nothing but strengths whenever a particular pedologist or geologist whenever he go for an interpreting of a particular profile students he may interpret the results of jm he may see the results which is formed by the geological process geological process means all the soil forming processes all the geological process he will inform and also he will see some discontinuities discontinuities will be we will be identify we discontinuities will be identify in the combination of master horizons also so students this discontinuity is mostly observed in with the, with the distinct changes in particle size distribution distinct changes in particle size distribution so this particle size distribution is completely will be explained by this discontinuity zone what meant a discontinuity so it is nothing but students a discontinuity is nothing but is reflect in the investigators interpretation of genesis of a layer in question so you can't be put anything you may say some different material students where you will get one example next slide so you will found different particle material will be there which is found by genesis and in the investigator the particular pedologist particular particular geologist will investigate that that particular material an inspector and he will find out the discontinuity so discontinuous are mostly commonly where you can see students mostly in loose soil wherever you can find a loose or glacial drift is there where the wind surface drift is there or you can see some free gravel and uh, some local mixing one matter so we can see some mixing you know while while mixing of a few two or three types of soils you can see some type of different material so discontinuities are nothing but students there are few materials there are few particle particles which are differ from the main master horizons that is called the discontinuities just for example for understanding students see it's students if the sequence is like this so you have dig the profile and you found this sequence so you know what is a ap what is e bt1 and what is a bt all this what is the what is this small t was explained about everything was explained in the previous class so try to see so we have found all the, this is this is a examine we have seen ap e e means is the level bt1 and here you can see students see that 2 bt2 2 bcc see at least please remember this one so it indicates what happens students top three horizons are formed by one geological material so top three horizons the origin the abc are formed and the material different origin present in the lower case three horizons and material which has formed by the different uh, material the different material other than this master horizon you have mentioned with the lower case letters lower case letters small letter c t1 t2 and also students this numbers this one two numbers the bt continue discontinuity see the suffix number this number the suffix number identify the subdivisions of the bt throughout the discontinuity and one is not not you not, not used in identifying the top geological order so students remember this b and t generally bt it is for example t means mostly to clay content is there and some other material was mixed with that particular uh, particular layer then you have to give two so for example i think it, uh, it is very difficult to understand for you but try to try to make a note say for example students this is a profile which you have uh, which we have uh, digged and you we, we found this what we have we have found all these things ap ap will be there it's a plow layer ap means plow layer and ap then there is another alluvial horizon will be there which is completely washed out and i will use a different color um yeah uh, we have a different uh, thing is there at students there is another e horizon is there and coming to now if you see another one b or oh, it's very light yeah there is a then you found some b horizon is there so in b you can see different different is there you can see different some other new material is there because of due to the glacial drift due to the wind due to the mixing of layers all these things will happen you can see some discontinuities and different particles will be there so here you can say for example this is a b horizon this is a completely b horizon students here you can see one type of material in the in the in the b horizon itself then you will put as t1 right at the same time after after, go, after going for in, in, in deeper and deeper then you have found some other thing then 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 also you will found some other different material then it is a bt1 then it is called the 2 bt2 so here you can the b horizon was completed 2 is 1 bt bt2 like this the different different layers we will give different different classes based on the material which we have observed and we have which type of material so each of this t has one different meaning which you have explained to us i think it's a clay content if i if i am correct which is a, which is explained in the previous class so 
like this this this, this discontinuities this continue this uh, discontinuities will play a major role so the suffix number also students so the t1 will be different from t2 and this t this will not be you know this way they, this way this is not indicating the main horizon student that is what is very important and also students you cannot see any organic layers are not designed as a lithon lithon and you cannot see by convention organic layers are not designed as a lithological discontinuity lithological some ge geological is a lithological discontinuity means a natural forming discontinuity but but you can see students organic layers are never considered as discontinuities but layers some some layers of buried layers have perhaps some properties indicate of pedogenic development and some buried horizons are there those were those horizons sometimes due to their those horizons may or may not so whenever these organic layers are buried may or may, may or may not be a, may or may not be designated as a discontinuity so if a horizon was developed in a mineralic lithological so any mineral is similar to the overlaid material a discontinuity is not identified so it is very difficult students so if all of a sudden in, in a particular profile to observe any material was buried there, there, deeper and deeper it is very difficult and you cannot identify any discontinuity so you cannot identify below the layer so the layer by layer you cannot identify any discontinuity this is coming to the next students whatever lithological discontinuity may varies so this discontinuities will create a lot of problems students if there is a volcanic ash present is there there will be problems there is there will be some problems in discontinuities and also ashes will be will give some sort of blanket and topographic topographic conditions also will give one type of undergo means and many alluvial deposits so all this all this mixtures of layers will give some sort of discontinuities sometimes it may create some lot of confusion also in the, during the investigations and also students and for this all this can be occasional what will happen means to avoid that confusion we use some two words called prime and carset symbols generally what is the meaning of this occasional students you see they to try to read this line this line is there i this is the main reason why i have sent this ppt to early one day earlier so occasionally see this i read this occasionally two horizons may develop in a profile have the same combination of letters and numbers of the horizon designation but separate by unlike horizon so they may have same same properties and you can say develop a same profile having same combination of letters and numbers for the horizon designation but separated by some sort of unlike unlike horizon so whenever an investigator want to inter interpret due to this pedogenic process whenever this type of condition was prevailed what will happen means the lower of the two horizons are designated as with this prime symbol this student for example if it is a e you know what is a and b and all this all these fundamentals and b h we get this type of things but here we have given this symbol bt profile so e is an origin formed with the association of bt generally because of these all leachings will be happen with the association of bt this form horizon and subsequently bh so bh also have one here zone and formed with a e origin so soil such genetic scenarios are referred as bisequel this is what this is i hope you have understood so whenever you found a same pro profile in development with the same letters see same letters but have a some separated by unlike origin so you can say some separation so there will be some separation between these two so then whenever whenever you repeat this then what will happen we use this symbol this biquit symbol by sequence symbol this symbol right this prime symbol e this symbol by by prime symbol This is, and also this is the cartlet symbol. This cartlet symbol is used as a prefix to the master horizon, and designated as a indication of presence of human transport materials. For example, if, if this symbol was used, see this symbol. This symbol is like this: the same sequel, same different, same origins, but separated by unlike origins. Like see, there is a two B origins, but separated by same same origins formed by, and we have separated the, with this symbol. But if but if it was filled by any man-made material, some other filled material, what will happen? Then we should use this carat symbol. So, for example, so, so remember one thing, students. So any two layers which are formed, which are, which have a same reference number, same reference letter, and and but separated by a unlike horizon. See this separation. Then we should use this prime prime symbol. But if the same thing was happened. and some human transported material was there between those layers means then we should then we should use this carat symbol this symbol see this this cap symbol this crown symbol this carat symbol we should use that means best example i will see now see this is what i am saying the horizon sequence see students a cap c cap and ab this carat symbol actually this carat there is a carat carat not carat 
B two B one and B two B two C. This, this is the symbol. It indicates that the two upper margins are formed in the material that were transported by the humans and buried up the soil with an A B C origin. So, what is the meaning of this? This one. So, we use this symbol. See, this symbol is correct symbol we have used. What is the meaning of this? This, this is the meaning. So, all these two layers are formed by the human interference. So, something was filled by the humans. If whatever might be, maybe some bricks. Pottery or some other human film, even sometimes you can say plastic, etc., etc., from any other waste material as well. Then we can, we can, we will give this type of this type of symbol, this card symbol. But this symbol, students, this just remember, don't this symbol, this prime symbol. When we will give, formed with the same, formed with the same combination, same profiling is there, but separated by the two unlike horizons, both are same. But we will use this prime symbol. So please remember what is the difference between prime symbol and card symbols. You may expect some some uh, some uh, some questions. Please try to understand this prime symbol and correct symbols. This is the main thing. And coming to the next students, this is what students class. So diagnostic the, the diagnostic soils uh, soil materials. So we have so today we are going to all read all these things. This is what students. So a uh, quantified identification of different soil materials in origin is an integral part of the soil taxonomy. Just to rewind what we have discussed in the previous time, you know, the last time we have discussed about the epipedons, endopedons, etc. There we have learned many things, students, like andic material, alpic material, like this we have seen, and also some organic materials, etc. So, like that, we have read many things. So, those materials in, in identifying in a particular profile, we see different materials. Those materials are maybe mineral or organic. Okay. Now, best example, students. Now we will see all those things. Right. Mineral. So this is what students. Mineral soil materials. So what is the mineral soil material, students? See, students. This point you have already. Read. So whatever it might be, that particular soil should be saturated with 30 cumulative days, and should have 20% organic matter, or saturated for 30 30 or more cumulative days per an year in normal year, unless it was artificially drained. So mineral material where where that mineral material will be produced, that should be completely saturated for 30 days, unless it was no uh, in complete years. And will have should have a 20% organic carbon should be there, and it will unless that the saturation should be there unless it was artificially drained. And so unless we give an artificial drainage only, that uh, that water will be drained off. In that particular position only, we can see the mineral soil materials. Okay, students, and also how this organic carbon was evolved, excluding the live roots. So whatever the roots are there, we should exclude them. So whatever the roots are with life, we should exclude it. And based on the organic carbon by weight, we have to come into mineral fractions. So mineral fraction in the soils were classified based on the weight weight percentage of the organic carbon. Uh, we have seen where they have classified few things. What are those? So if you found less than 18 percentage of carbon, if the mineral fraction content is 60 percentage. So this is the criteria. You should have a less than 80 percent of carbon and mineral fraction is content about around 60 percentage or more clay or it should have a 12 percent of carbon if the mineral fraction has no clay so here i should have a 60 percent of i should not have any clay but the carbon content should be around 12 percent so less than 12 plus so less than less than more or less 12 plus and clay percentage should be multiplied that means more percentage of clay if the mineral fraction contains less than 60 percentage of clay so these are these some sort of criteria which is given to this particular soil materials so if any is any any material which you found in a pedons in a pedons where pedons means that uh, that layers you should satisfy all this criteria an organic soil mineral student these are contains more organic carbon than specified by the mineral matter you see students here you have seen some mineral fraction is more but in organic there you have to see organic carbon is very more that is a very important thing and we will see next slide name of the mineral soil material so what are the different different kinds of uh, uh, min soil minerals are mineral fractions where we can see mostly we can see students albic material where we albic materials have you heard this material definitely one soil order we have already seen albic material in some uh, some endopedons or epipedons we have heard about this albic material so this type of material mostly we can see it will give a white and gray color only so remember students they may ask the question they may they may give this line soil material with white gray color mainly due to the color of uh, primary sand and silt dash and they will give some different different a a this one b this one and they will give this material then you should be very careful you should give this answer so this should be it should be albic material so albic material is what is that 
soil materials which have completely white to gray color students should have some white to gray color content only that too with a primary of sand and silt particles that you should contain some sand and silt particles it is called the albic material so based on this this way this this identification of this material plays a major role in soil taxon this is what i mentioned and also it had they have given this albic materials have one specific uh, measurable properties what are those if the chroma is two or less all this color that color i have said this color na gray color two or less moisture moist value is three and dry value value means that value students not if you if you moist the soil soil sample it should be three if you if you if you analyze the dry dry sample it will give six the value will give six or more Or more, or or it should there is another criteria. Or the value should be in moist condition should be four, in dry condition should be five. So these are the criteria for the albic material. Please note down. Please note down in your running notes. The chroma condition is two or less. If or in in moist condition the value should be three. In dry condition the value should be six. Or there is another criteria. The moist value should be four, or or with a dry value should be five. So the, all this value, all their Munson readings, this color value, all those are. Munson reading readings, okay, and they have given the third one also. Chroma is three or less. If the condition is if the condition is like this, chroma is three or less, then the value should be six. In dry condition, the value should be seven, or even sometimes more. And overall, students, chroma is completely color uh, controlled by the color of uncoated silt and sand grains. This is what this is what I meant. Uncontrolled silt and sand grains. So overall, the hue value will be five by R or even redder. And the color value are listed in the time of one year. So the color value may be item one, two, will be more than one. So like this, students, based on this color, this white, gray, and color, it will give. It will give. It, it will give more uh, this thing. It, it, it has some specific material. But overall, students, thumb rule is like this. So albic material means it is a white, gray color mainly due to the uh, white, white, gray color mainly due to the color of. Primary sand silt particles, so soil materials are like this. If the soil materials are like this, it's it is blindly we can say those are all albic materials. So albic materials means soil materials with white grey color, mainly due to the color of primary sand and silt. Okay, students, please please remember these are the thumb factors. So please remember this. And coming to the andic, so andic andic. What is it? Is all of us say andic means what you will get in your mind? What do you say? What what is the meaning of andic material? Any idea? Any idea what is the meaning of andic material, students? Can anyone answer? Krishna Kumar, can you answer what is andic material means? Krishna Kumar, andic material ka matlab kya hai? Andic material means what is the meaning of andic material? Volcanic material. Yeah, volcanic eruptions. Okay, please try. Everyone should interact the class. Okay, so volcanic material. So its andic properties mainly due to the presence of significant of short range of compound singlets. So this this andic materials, this volcanic materials singlet alopan. Hemoglobinite and perrhenite. So mostly andic materials are formed from the volcanic ash. So all this all andic materials we have, we can see mostly volcanic ash and other volcanic material that contain volcanic glass. Sometimes we can see. So it won't have this this particular materials also have some specific properties. What are those? Twenty five percent organic carbon by weight. If the phosphate was retention, it is around around eighty five percent should be there. And or more ammonium oxide extract. These are experimental students. If we go for ammonium oxide extractable, and aluminium plus one by two of iron phosphate, all these things we can get. So total there will be two point seven bulk density at minus thirty three kilo pascal. So all these are all measurable properties. So when you whenever you collect a sample from any particular layer, if you if you found them, if you found this type of characters and this type of material as there, then you can directly you can say those materials are. Andic material. Those are completely your andic material. Coming to the next students, and also the continuation. Phosphate phosphate retention mostly, mostly about twenty five or even more. Or the particle size, the particles are around. It will be two point two to two mm, almost from silt to sand. The diameter is following here, and these are the different factors. Almost aluminium and iron uh, iron oxides per total per per percentage should be around point four, or sometimes it will be from point not two to two. May minimum mm fractions, millimeter fraction. That is, and you can see some volcanic glass, or sometimes we can say around to all these properties, aluminium oxides, iron oxides. Combined, you can see two percentage, or as you said, it is continuous. Minimum fractions and more. Five percentage of volcanic glass will be there. 
So overall, so the glass percentage is around that of sometimes 36.25 aluminum oxides and percentage are totaling between. So all this sometimes either this, either this or this. So sometimes it will be around 0.4 to 2.5. So these combinations, aluminum oxides and aluminum ion oxides and the mineral fraction and other fractions, other sand particles will be some 0.02 to 2 mm. This is common for everywhere. Here to here, it is everywhere. It's common. And volcanic glass percentage intimated between 5 to 30 percentage. So that aluminum oxides plus 1 by 2 ion oxides percentage times around 15.26 percentage students overall. So if you include all these things, all the volcanic ashes, this aluminum fractions and this mineral fractions, everything, you get around 32, 36.25. So all these things, I think theoretically, theoretically while explaining, it will be, it will, you can't catch, but while doing analysis, whenever you, you get overall total percentage like 36.25, you, you, can, you can go and say that these are all ash, volcanic ash material. So here is a thumb rule for this, it is completely clear. Volcanic ash material. If you, if you if you got any question like regarding the volcanic ash me ash means, then you can blindly you can keep that that material is andic material. That material belongs to the andic material. So coming to the uh, densic material. So densic materials. So densic materials nothing but this this will be restrict the root restriction will be there and relatively unaltered by the, it is a pedogenic process but not cemented students so root enters so it is very hard material students root cannot enter into they cannot pass this material but it will go to the cracks between this so horizontal cracks around 10 centimeters cracks will be there so that that, that so those are called the densic material so root restriction root restricted and very hard but not cemented these are not not altered by the pedogenic process and roots will be entered through cracks of that material. So those are called the densic materials. So those, those materials are called the densic material. Remember these lines, students. If you get anything like this, those are called the densic material. So dire, dire, dire knots. So these are nothing but students. This material is another material, weakly cemented, interior dire knots or concretions with diameter of one centimeter. And we can see these are cemented by silica oxides. And when the pets are air dried, they do not slake in water. So this, this already this experiment was already I have explained in the very two lectures back I have explained what is the slaking of water. If you put we should, if you put this dried pad in the particular water it won't slake it won't slake means to go it won't go off it will be it will be compact or itself uh, or itself but are destroyed by the hot KOC or hand washes. So whenever we dry this diuron if you take this any material and you put it in air dry and then you put it in a water it won't slake even if you put it in HCl also it won't slake but it will be destroyed by the hot potassium hydroxide after acid washing. So whenever you have, after when you die and when you give acid hot wash dressing, then you can see there will, that pet will be destroyed. So if you see this type of condition, that is called the deuteronoids. So these are the deuteronoids. So these are the material which you have seen all this thing. So this is another type of material. And another material is called gelic material. So gelic, everyone knows, where are churning and freezing conditions. Wherever you can see some churning and freezing conditions and thawing conditions, so all those where, where you can see some frosting, permafrost stable is there after conditions. So those may, there you can see some gelic material. So all the cold conditions, wherever you can see cryoturbations, all those things in that area, you can see this gelic material. So identifying of secondary carbonate. This is another type of uh, material students in soil materials or carbonates. Sometimes translocations will be there and you can see concretion of soft mass will be there. Some filaments as a coating on the fed surfaces and you can see some white coatings we can see students. While you're digging some profile in some area, you can see some white surface coating will be there. So if you see all those things, definitely you can say those are all say accumulation identify identify you can add those are called the secondary carbonates. This is regarding gelic material and secondary carbonates. Coming to the next students, paralithic material. Mostly these are all mostly sandstone, weakly consolidated sandstone, siltstone, shale, and other isovolumetrically weighted bedrocks, fabric consolidated rocks materials extremely weak cemented moderate cemented so roots can enter only in cracks interval of greater than 10 centimeters so that crack should be around 10 centimeters so those are all called the paralithic material so paralithic material means what are those those are all the consolidated bedrocks of sand silt and shell those are called the paralithic material remember students remember the key points but every every material has some key points so just remember so coming to paralytic means these are all completely consolidated bedrock such as sandstone, siltstone, and shale. And coming to another one is called permafrost. These are completely thermal conditions only. You can see that you can see that conditions are where the conditions are zero, below zero degrees, mostly in Russian countries on polar peaks, polar polar ends of the earth. You can see these conditions. For permafrost materials, you can see in that conditions. 
and another one is called sporic material sporic even you have heard this word also sporic material in the mineral horizon so mineral material complete dominated by the alluvial isomorphous material of organic matter aluminum with or with uh, some you can you may or may not find the iron in this particular conditions so those are called the sporic material sporic material means completely dominated by the alluvial amorphous material you may have organic matter and aluminum sometimes may 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 or may not be presence of iron so ph condition students what will the if you identify the ph condition in one is to one water condition it should be around 5.9 or so even sometimes we can see less organic carbon around 0.6 should be there you see this condition is called the sporic material sporic materials are keyword is dominated by the alluvial amorphous material of organic matter and aluminium with or without iron so sporic material under in the albic material so you can see below below the albic material you can easily see in the pedal sometimes you can see the identity how, how you can identify the sporic material by darker and redder colors so below the albic material you can find the sporic material by some darker and redder colors normally what are the what are the properties students so density of oxalate oxalate extractant so one extractant the value will be will be around to 1 2.5 or more and the value is less than two times so this oxalo extractant value overlying alluvial horizon all this all these are laboratory analysis results students so and all the value of sometimes all these things so measure of spectrometer so by using this experiment this oxalo extractant we measure this particular soil around 430 nanometers this is the mean thing so sporic means alluvial amorphous material with organic matter and aluminum with or without iron so this is the regarding sporic material coming to the next one sulfidic materials so mostly the sulfidic material you can see mostly appear in acid sulfate soils wherever the sulfur material sulfur and iron come with oxides or sulfur and iron will be there there you can see this type of and you can you can see different metals will be there yeah this is what here mentioned mineral and organic material that contain oxidizable sulfur compound with a ph of 1 is to 1 water soluble how much it will give yes 3.5 in acid sulfate soils you can see this much ph so which is acidifies by uh, by 3.5 or even ph units of value up to 4 so mostly students where you can see when you acidifies which acidifies by 0.5 or more if the ph units of 4 or less when kept under the moist aero aerobic conditions of the room temperature for 60 minutes so overall students sulfidic material means wherever you found some sulfur content oxidizable sulfur and you can see some coatings of some metals and coatings of the sulfur material that that kind that material is called sulfidic material so here the keyword is content of oxidizable sulfur which is very very important thing coming to the next students organic matter so up to now we have seen only mineral fractions now we are seeing the organic soil fractions as we as we discussed in very introduction mostly soil mineral fractions or so soil materials will be two types organic mineral or organic materials and in organic materials in mineral materials so mineral materials we have already discussed and now we will see the organic materials organic material means mostly fiber students fibers means whatever fibers means you will exclude the live roots so live roots may not be not considered as a soil material because it's an alive Uh, smaller than 2 cm so the, those particles those particular organic matter should that fiber should be smaller than 2 cm after when after when we crush it with our hands when we crush and shear with our hands if we, and and the, those materials should be sieve if we sieve those should be retained in 100 100 100 mesh sieve that is opening 7.15 if you sieve any material any soil and you if, if you see less than 2 2 uh, cm small organic fiber particles those are called the fibers and the coarse pieces of wood cannot be harshed by the hand considering so coarse wood some very strong wood we can't crush crushing up rubber wet organic material in the hand so all this material the small volume of wet material rubber bit in the volume around time to estimate fiber content of the soil material so this is the this is one type of experiment small volume of wet material if we rub between our thumb and four finger what will happen 10 times before the estimation of fiber content of organic material will be taken place so these are the criteria students so overall you just uh, that so uh, If you want to say anything, any 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 soil material is organic material means those material should be should be retained in hundred mesh. That is around opening per or there should be point one five millimeter opening per each seal per hundred seal. So that is for the fiber. Coming to the next uh, fabric soil materials. So these are the slightly decomposed. So the many material for slightly decomposed material with three four or more volume composed of rubber material. so these are the slightly decomposed material called the fabric soil material 
slightly decomposed. And we can see some chroma and soil value almost value and chroma value will be 7 by 1, 7 by 2, 8 by 1. So these are all the chroma value of uh, value and chroma of, uh, of color uh, of a sodium phosphoride extractant on a white filter paper. So whenever you extract a material by using the sodium pyrophosphate extractant on a white filter paper, filter by any number of filter paper, then you, you will get this type of value 7 by 1, 7 by 2, 8 by 1, 8 by 2. These are the fabric material. Fabric, fa fabric uh, soil material means which are slightly decomposed organic soil material. Another one is called hemic soil material. So hemic soil materials, partly decomposed organic soil material, generally have rubbed, the, the rubbed fiber contain between one sixth of the total volume. And has some sodium pyrophosphate extraction colors that do not meet the criteria of fabric and fabric material. So hemic material, so this is slightly decomposed, Hemic material is partially decomposed. Just remember that one. And these are the values for this. Here you can see some extractants, sodium extractant. If you do say any, if you if you if you extract it with the sodium pyrophosphate, it neither if it neither go for the fabric and fabric. We will see the fabric material in coming slide. It won't reach the colors between the fabric and fabric material. So it will be in between. So it will be hemic material. Coming to the next. Humilvic material. So it is accumulation of colloidal organic material. So humilvic material means keyword students, colloidal organic material or humus. Like two centimeters or even more thick at the depth in organic soils that have been drained, cultivated. Are usually immediately present above the sand mineral layer. So generally it's humic illuvic, humic illuvic material, humic humilvic material mostly found in sand, sandy mineral layer. You can see this humic illuvic material. This is students. So, so remember students. To note down the keyword. So accumulation of organic collateral, collateral, uh, collateral organic material means is called the humilvic material. So this is very keyword important to remember. So limnic material, which I've just now said. So lim limnic material, L horizon. How many people have remembered that L horizon? If you, if you attended my previous class, everyone knows what is a limic material, limic L horizon. The L horizon means accumulation of this corpogenous earth. Corpogenous earth, and there is another earth. What is that? The two types of that. One is corpogenous set, another one. Okay, so no one is interested to answer. Anyhow, corpogenous set. So these are complete deposition of underwater students. So below the water conditions, which are the submerged. So whatever the organic matter was completely decomposed or present below the water. So those materials are comes under the limnic material. In that, you can see one one of, one of the important called corpogenous set. Mostly. This type of uh, corpogenous set are completely we have a moist color value up to four you will be there mostly you can see fecal fecal pellets will be there of uh, of the plant and animals under below the water so and you can see some frozen flakes will be there so whatever the organic matter which is which was formed below the below the um, underwater it is called the corpogenous set completely divided material and another one is called diatonema set this is very important so this is a completely organic coated which is will be very fine students, very fine. And you can examine only under 440X microscope. That is called, it will be very fine, very white color powder will be there. All these are comes under the, uh, will form under the, under the water. So marl, there's another one, this carbonate rich limnetic material. Here you can see very high rich of carbonic underwater, carbonate rich limnetic material will be there, which moist color value up to five, or even reach up or react with diluted HCl. Most of the most of the mineral materials are mineral soil materials. So mostly this mineral are sometimes will be mineral material will be there, but form under the below the water. So all these students are to all this sorry. So all this, so all this limnetic materials are completely forms under the water, under the water organic matter by the uh, uh, by the underwater animals, animals means all those uh, worms, all those things and uh, plants, all this comes in. So this is corpogenous, so marl. So sparic soil materials, these are the highly decomposed organic materials. It has rubbed between the content less than one sixth of the volume of specific sodium power. These are the, these are the experimental values. Sodium phospho, phosphopyrrole extract and color indicates the more advanced stage of the organic matter decomposition. If you do analysis, it will show the more, more advanced stage, the sparic soil materials. So sparic soil materials will be there. So sparic soil materials will be, so this is, this is, the, this is the highly decomposed material. But Previously, we have seen another one, this one, this one, hemic. These are all the acu collateral accumulation. This is partly decomposed. This is slightly decomposed. So these are the different students. So, so remember, remember all these things. 
and that's all for today's and with this we have completed this soil macromorphology macromorphology also included the study of pedons epipedons endopedons also that we have already discussed in the our previous uh, lectures which, which, which we have discussed everything was complete in the previous lecture we have read the what is epipedons endopedons and how we are going to identify so with this